I started my training with Axiom Space at the beginning of August 2024. So it's been, let's say, seven months of, of training and a lot, a lot has been accomplished during that time. I did modules with NASA, with SpaceX, with Axiom Space, with the European Space um, Agency, as well as Japanese Space Agency in, in Japan. So as astronauts of Axiom uh, mission, we train in Japan on Kibo module, on Japanese experimental module on the ISS, with Europe in Cologne on Columbus, that is our European laboratory on the station. With NASA we mostly train the emergency cases, medical procedures, how to deal with the life on the ISS, as well as how to um, perform the daily hygiene and how to use operational tools. We have a lot, a lot of other auxiliary trainings as, for example, in Huntsville, Alabama, where NASA runs their payload procedure, so their research science. Houston mostly runs the ISS as a platform, as a laboratory. I had the chance to participate twice to parabolic flight campaign. Once, for the first time, it was the first time I experienced microgravity. That was, that was a very, very interesting feeling, like physiologically. It's like as if you go on the highway with a car and you go over a, a bridge that goes up and then you have this feeling of a stomach going up. So you can imagine doing the same thing in a parabolic flight, but the, the feeling is 100 times stronger. My first parabolic campaign was with other astronauts from ESA, with the career corps of five our astronauts. My second parabolic campaign was a more research-oriented campaign. I could participate to certain research. As well, there was a Polish research team on that parabolic flight that I could manipulate their research and talk to, to Polish students together with Polish media. So that was a, a really good moment for myself during my training. When astronauts splash down into the ocean, they are fetched by the boat and then they are removed from the capsule. But from that boat, they are being transported back to the to the ground to land with a helicopter. One of the elements of the training is also the training of the helicopter that potentially can get um, damaged and fall down into the ocean. And we need to know as astronauts how to leave such a helicopter and be in safe conditions. So what happens during that training, we are exposed into similar conditions of a helicopter structure that goes into the swimming pool, rotates, and we need to orient ourselves and be able to leave in safe conditions and, and to, to finish on the surface and then finally on the life raft. NOLS means National Outdoor Leadership Training. This is an expeditionary skill training that we are in a certain location outdoors, uh, most importantly a remote location where the crew gathers and everything they have, they have on their backs, they have uh, on their, on their, in their backpacks for us. Nose training happened on kayaks in Mexico, where we were camping out on the beach and moving from one remote location to another, as well as integrating with the team, sharing, um, sharing tasks going forward with the whole expedition. One of my favorite part of training with my team was the Columbus training in Europe. And why? Because I feel a bit in Cologne as a host. So with me there was Tibor and Shux from, from my team and we were learning how Columbus Laboratory is built and how it works. So obviously there is a structure of Columbus but there is many systems that maintain life, what we call ECLIS systems, environmental control and life support systems, powering, thermal control and, uh, and many others that help to execute later on science as well as life on, on the ISS and myself. I will treat Columbus as home because there is one of the, um, of the locations is CASA and CASA is a rack location that can be a temporary crew quarter in which very probably I will be sleeping. Also at EAC in Cologne at the European Astronaut Center I train to perform science and my science will be primarily in Columbus. We have many different scientific racks that provide infrastructure in terms of power, data, video, different types of gases to control the atmosphere of different scientific experiments. I've done many trainings, mostly on five European racks that are used for 
research in biology and biotechnology, in physics and fluid sciences, um, as well as many other of them. I had a training on metal 3D printer. This is one of the European experiments and for the first time we perform 3D printing in space and to see how the structures they evolve to be able to to say if they are stronger than on earth how the crystalline structure looks like and is it a poten potential way forward for us to build certain parts already in space based on demand. One of the Polish experiments is from the company called Cortivision and it's, um, the experiment is called Photograph and the research is the imaging of the activity of the brain using what is called FNIRS, the Functional Near Infrared Spectroscopy of the Brain. How it works, it emits light and this light goes into your brain and how the light is absorbed by the brain can be interpreted um, um, the, in terms of oxygen content in, in the certain parts of the brain, translating finally into activity of the brain. This experiment is very interesting because it can enable in the future much better machine brain interfaces. For example, for people with artificial limbs or controlling robots directly from our thoughts back, for example, to robots working on another planet. As astronauts, we perform a lot of activities that are called BDC. BDC, it means baseline data collections. Mostly these BDCs are a collection of our data of human physiology for medical purposes and medical science later on. I had many, many BDCs for, for example, mm, research on my veins and muscles in my legs, as well the, the, the brain activity that um, will be performed during the Polish experiment. I got a lot of trainings and um, a collection of, uh, of samples, for example, on, on blood, urine and feces. I had as well a training on how to perform the collection on, of, of the blood on myself to be able to use the devices and not to take time from other astronauts. Most of emergency trainings we train at NASA for the ISS at, and also at SpaceX for the Dragon capsule. The main emergencies on, on the ISS is fire, rapid depress where we lose the atmosphere and obviously people cannot live and breathe without oxygen, without having the atmosphere. And the third one is a leak of ammonia that is one of the coolants in our cooling systems. These three emergencies, astronauts need to know how to handle them to be able to um, to bring back operational conditions in most of the cases or eventually be safe in their vehicle and come back home. Also one big part of the training are medical emergencies. You know, different things can happen in orbit and astronauts need to be prepared to be able to handle medical emergencies to bring help to colleagues or sometimes being subjected to a medical emergency so colleagues can help you. I really enjoy that part of the training. That's the procedures are extremely well written, the hardware is very well optimized and there is a very specific um, flow of uh, actions to be able to bring back someone to life and stabilize the patient. I was myself a first aider before in my work at CERN and now I could expand knowledge on human physiology and actually medical emergencies. I am extremely excited about the mission. The training, the big chunk of the training is behind me and the training is almost over. I'm looking forward to the launch and I'm looking forward to this last moment where I'm going to hear three, two, one and lift off. And obviously this is a stressful moment, but also I can't wait to be on the station. And I think one of these precious moments that I'll, that I'll try to cherish and live through is floating towards cupola window and be able to look back at home and look back at all of you here.